Let's continue talking about syntactic obstacles to finite state machine modeling of human languages. Spoiler alert, it's recursion and long distance dependencies. Uh, these are two phenomena that finite state machines cannot model. And in general, any rule-based system is gonna have a very difficult time dealing with long distance dependencies and recursion. So in the last video, we looked at three syntactic concepts relative clauses, which are sentences nested within sentences. So we have the example of, I ate the pizza that has cheese. Or there's a main clause, I ate the pizza, and a relative clause that has cheese. We had uh, the concept of center embedding, which is a sentence that falls somewhere in the middle, I'm sorry, a relative clause that falls somewhere in the middle of a main clause. So for example, um, the pizza that I ate is delicious. We also have long distance dependencies, which are relationships between words that are far apart or structures that are far apart. So we will now look at how finite state machines try to model these constructions. So in our previous videos, we looked at sentences like Jane eats, Jane eats pizza, Jane eats ice cream, Jane Smith eats ice cream. And we figured out that there could be a regular expression that could model all of these. We have it on the left. So a sentence is one or more nouns for the subject, so Jane or Jane Smith, one verb, eats, and zero or more nouns for the direct object. So we have, for example, Jane Smith eats ice cream which is the one in this uh, finite state machine. We start with a sentence, this is our initial state, and then we get the input chain as one noun. We can, we, so we have at least one noun. We can keep getting noun-like inputs such as Smith, and then we will jump from the state M to the state V. This transition takes the input eats. V is an nth state, so we could exit through here, and we would get the correct structures, Jane eats or Jane Smith eats. And these are perfectly fine English sentences. If we continued from V to the final N, we could get the direct object nouns. For example, ice. If we exit then, we would get Jane eats ice, which is strange, but still a fine sentence. If we keep getting noun inputs, we could have Jane eats ice cream. Jane Smith eats ice cream. All of these are English sentences. And maybe with enough time and determination, we could come up with one big uh, finite state machine that describes every sentence in English, and potentially every sentence in every human language. So can this be done? The short answer is no. And it's because of one feature of finite state machines. In finite state machines, you can only be in one state at any given time. When you arrive at state B, for example, you have no memory of what happened before. You have no way of knowing how many times you went through A. So if you wanted to create strings like this one below, AN and BN, you would need to create the following strings. A, B, where N is equal to 1. A, A, B, B where n is equal to 2. A, 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 B, 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 n equals 3. And you need to create those strings and only those strings where you have as many A's as you have B's. A finite state machine cannot do this because it would need to be in two states at once. It would need, when you're in B, you would need to know how many times you went through A so that B could do the same. You would need to somehow read what was happening before so you could replicate it. You would need some sort of memory. It could be, you could implement it as a variable somewhere. You can implement it as any other means of recording how many times you went through A, and then that uh, piece of information goes here, and then state B would need to absorb that information for you to replicate it as many times as it happened in A. This is not a finite state machine. This is some other structure, and it's more complicated and um, as you can see, a finite state machine, as we've described, cannot do this because it would only be standing in B and there would be no way for it to know what happened before. 
And there are, there are structures in human language that have the form an to bn. One of them is center embedding in relative clauses. So let's say we have sentences like the cat ate, the dog chased, the elephant ate, the rat bit. We could have those, we could combine those in center embeddings. For example, the cat, the dog chased, ate. And this is a cat, and the dog chased the cat, and that cat ate. The cat, the dog chased, ate. We would have the elephant, the rat bit, ate. This is an elephant who ate, and then the rat bit it. Actually, it bit it before. Um, so you can have one main clause and one relative clause. You can also have two levels of embedding. So the cat, the dog, the rat bit chased, ate. This is a cat, and the dog chased the cat, and the dog chased the cat was bit by a rat. The dog, the cat, the rat bit, chased, ate. So as you can see, you can have center embeddings going down, and in theory, this could go on forever until some stopping condition stops it. In order to construct any of these, you would need to know that you had two nouns going in, and so you need two nouns going out. The cat, the dog, and then the cat, you go into the, the relative clause, the dog chased, and by now you have two nouns, the cat, the dog, and one verb, chased. You would need to remember that what happens next must be a verb, eight, in order for the structure to make sense. So you would need to remember that if you have that you have two nouns and that somehow you need to get two verbs on the way out. This structure is essentially n nouns followed by n verbs. This is the same with the cat, the, the dog, the rat bit, the cat, the dog chased, that cat ate. This has three nouns going in, the cat, the dog, the rabbit, and then it needs to climb out with three verbs, bit, chased, ate. So it need to be recording somewhere that it went in three nouns so that it can have three verbs going out. It would need to remember previous states as it's going up. Finite state machines cannot look back and therefore they could not be able to model this. These structures are possible because of recursion, which again is a major pillar of contemporary human syntax, of, sorry, contemporary theories of human syntax. And there's, there's really no way to model recursion with finite state machines, because it would need to be an infinite finite state machine. We can have a very simple one, like in the cat ate, the dog chased, the elephant ate, the rat bit. We have S for sentence, NP, we're going to call a noun phrase, the cat, the dog, the elephant, the rabbit, and then we're going to call a VP, a verb phrase, eight, chased, eight, bit. This finite state machine here can model these four sentences. The cat ate, the dog chased, the elephant ate, the rat bit. As soon as we add one level of center embedding, you get a more complicated finite state uh, machine. So the cat, the dog chased for the sub-sentence, eight. If you add a second embedding, it gets even worse. The cat, the dog, the rat bit, chased, eight. The first problem with this is that there's no stopping point. There's, in theory, it could go on forever. In theory, you could have as many embeddings as you want, and then it would be impossible to build one of these finite state machines because it would go infinitely, it would embed into itself infinitely. You probably, you, if, uh, you should be asking yourself two things. First, is it even possible for humans to think infinite sen uh, sentences and have infinite embedding? That sounds kind of weird, first. And second, Nobody talks like this. You got, you, please be serious. Nobody makes sentences so complicated. Let's answer the second question first. People do make sentences as complicated as the one we just showed. Let's look at this sentence in English. So we have a sentence like, 
A student who, while in attendance at Carleton College, participates in an athletic contest during the school year, shall be permanently ineligible to blah, blah, blah. This is a perfectly fine human sentence, and it has two levels of embedding. This is made up of a student shall be permanently ineligible. A student who participates in an athletic contest during the school year shall be permanently ineligible. A student who, while in attendance at Carleton College, participates in an athletic contest shall be permanently ineligible. So it has one main sentence and two lower levels of center embedding. And we understand it. So humans do have sentences that are as complex as this. Regarding the first question, whether it's possible, really possible to go like infinitely down, in theory, it could be possible. Psychologically, it probably isn't, and we do have limits to what we can understand. Three embeddings are probably a realistic limit of what we can compute with our brains. And, psycholingu and psychological research and psycholinguistic research has demonstrated that seven embeddings is the absolute maximum that we could possibly process. So let's keep that idea for a minute. Maybe we don't have infinite embedding. We only have lots of embedding, which maybe we could manage with enough memory and time. By the way, this is a non-English sentence with three levels of embedding. The main sentence is, the governor found the city in a state of general turmoil. Der Landvogt fand die Stadt in allgemeinen Aufruhr. This has three levels of embedding. The, the, der Landvogt fand die Stadt in allgemeinen Aufruhr. Der Landvogt fand, als er in Berstutzenmarschen zurückkehrte, die Stadt in allgemeinen Aufruhr. Der Landvogt fand, als er von dem Benachrichtig in Berstutzenmarschen zurückkehrte, die Stadt in allgemeinen Aufruhr. Der Landvogt fand, als er von dem was vorgefallen, benachrichtig, in Versutzenmarschen zurückkehrte, die Stadt in allgemeinen Aufruhr. The governor found the city in a state of general turmoil as he returned in forced marches, having been informed about what had happened. This is a, this is a fine sentence, and it checks out, and it has three levels. And this is a sentence from a book. You can see the reference below. So these things exist. So even if we don't have infinite recursion, we have a lot of substructures and we have a lot of recursion and even if we got rid of the idea of infinity which we shouldn't because it's an important mechanism for how we construct syntax this still wouldn't save us the number of states we would need to represent english is approximately 10 to the 52 which is all those zero all those zeros right there so it would be practically impossible to build it not only would it be would it be impossible but it would be a fool's errand because at any point you could make up a new sentence. You could come up with new words and new, uh, new ways of saying things. And this would be a new sentence of English that would need to be incorporated in the system. So trying to model English like this is essentially a fool's errand. As if we didn't have enough problems, there's a second problem that we need to deal with. Long distance dependencies. These are related to recursion, but they're not the same. So, for example, we have pizza that has cheese is delicious. Here, pizza and is are related because pizza is a singular word, is is a singular word as well. You cannot say pizza that has cheese are delicious. That would be wrong. Likewise, in the sentence pizzas that have cheese are delicious, these two words are related. This one's plural, so this one needs to be plural as well. You cannot say pizzas that have cheese is delicious. In order to make a finite state machine that can read this, you look at how we have the two red states, the transition between cheese, and then you need to decide where to go. Do you have the word are as the next word, or do you have the word is as the next word? And by the way, asterisk means that that's wrong, that you don't do that. The correct path is R. In order to decide the transition from G's to R, you need, a, you need information from somewhere else in the finite state machine. You need information from the fact that pizza was plural, which happened one, two, three states before you, where you were. 
So you need your local information, the fact that you need to step out of the center embedding, and the information of the plural from the pizzas. And both of those states decide that your next word is going to be R. Finite state machines can only be in one state at one time, and they can only take information from one state. So this is not a finite state machine. Now we would have some other algorithm going on. In summary, there's several issues that we need to deal with. Finite state machines can only be in one state at any given time, and they cannot share information across non-adjacent states. Also, the finite state machine needs to be finite. Like There needs to be a finite number of states that it can be in so that we can program it and just make it. Because of these restrictions, finite state machines cannot model center embedding, recursion in general, because it could be infinite. And even if it's not, it could be an unmanageable number of states. And it cannot model long distance dependencies because they would need, this would need many states communicating with each other at the same time. So we need some other kind of abstraction to model human language. In the next video, we're going to talk about the Chomsky hierarchy, which is uh, a description of other potential formalizations that could help us model language.